Alright guys, this here is my service truck. It's a 2019 Ford F550 extended cab, four wheel drive. Uh, pal finger body crane and compressor on it. We're going to make a quick video of some of the stuff in the truck for insurance purposes. We've had some interesting characters come run around the country in the last few weeks. You know, it's 2020. See some things going on. Uh, nothing special here on the inside. Just some storage space. Got the crane remote down there. Um, here in the back, got the lay down pad. Got a three quarter inch precision instruments torque wrench down there. Uh, rain gear, clipboard. Uh, underneath of the seat, chock full of manuals for all of our trucks that we usually work on. All of our Toyota forklifts. Uh, here on the body, we got the compressor, uh, PTO driven off the truck, uh, 45 CFM at 150 psi. So, cranks out pretty good. Here in our uh, first compartment, we got CTEC drawers. Uh, up here in the top, got the half inch flex head, super long handle, snap on, half inch drive, and then Pittsburgh 24 inch breaker bar. Uh, you can see we got some lights here, got another light back up there, got my rubber gloves, got a diagnostic tool inside here, uh, propane torch here in the back, mechanic stethoscope. Um, respirator, nothing special there. Uh, top drawer here is primarily screwdrivers. We got Phillips flathead here, torques over there, like a hundred piece bit set, so I can get into anything else, including the tamper proof stuff. Uh, the micro screwdrivers, stubbies, any kind of marking tools for marking filters and all that. A um, couple of knives. Magnetic pickup tool. Uh, second drawer down here, got pliers mostly. And a couple different style of ice grips. Two of them down here that are uh, needle nose style. Some uh, hose pinch off pliers, nut drivers, uh, inside snap ring pliers, uh, adjustable jaw snap ring pliers, some tin snips, a couple different pairs of scissors and cutters. Uh, crescent wrenches, uh, Nipex Cobras, everybody's got those, um, and a couple of the, the cheap knockoff ones, vice grips, uh, flush cutters, uh, wire strippers and crimpers, uh, cutters, needle noses, uh, and all the wiring and pair pliers. Uh, this here drawer is the metric drawer people ask me how i keep it clean like this i don't put no extra effort into it the mats that are down in the bottom of the drawers here are just a tiny bit sticky so if you lay things in there so that they're holding each other up then it stays like that all right uh, this is all gear wrench stuff here um, from 6 to 18 mil this is all gear wrench long beam combination wrenches here from 6 all the way to 32 uh, you can see a couple of them that have been modified. Um, <clears throat> this one's a Matco 15 mil. Comes in real handy for drain plugs on GM V6s. Uh, this is my backup set of combination wrenches, all Craftsman, from uh, 7 mil to 22 mil. Uh, down here we got the little Craftsman ignition wrenches. Got the uh, metric line wrenches from 10 to 14 mil. Got the metric stubbies from 10 to 19. Uh, those are gear wrench too. Uh, these guys here are double box in ratcheting craftsmen's. Uh, honestly, I haven't used any of the four of them in quite a long time, but there was a time when they were super handy when I was working at the quarry. This here is the standard wrench drawer. Uh, these are all kind of spears and stuff that it's okay to chop it up if you get into a tight spot. These are all gear wrench. Um, from all the way down at quarter up to inch and a quarter. 
Uh, these are the gear wrench ratcheting ones from uh, 3 8 up to 3 quarter. These are my primary go-to wrenches. This bundle of them here in the middle. Almost every one of them is Proto, uh, except for this guy right here. It's a Mac. And that one down there, it's a New Britain, 5 8 I don't even know where that came from, but without a doubt, the most handy 5 8 that I've ever had. Uh, this batch of wrenches right here is all Craftsman um, from quarter up to inch and a quarter. Plus I've got a, um, or from up to inch and an eighth. And then I got this big New Britain inch and a quarter. And then same thing as above with the metrics. We got uh, <clears throat> Stubby's um, gear wrench from uh, 3 eighths up to 15 sixteenths. Next row down, this is all primarily half inch stuff, uh, impacts. These are the Harbor Freight hex kits, um, metric and standard. I've beat the crap out of these things with my uh, high torque Milwaukee M18, and not one of them's twisted at all. They've been really, really good to me. Um, another Pittsburgh half inch, like I said, long handled ratchet here. Um, some kind of no name 12 point sockets, except for. These two, um, Proto and Craftsman, those were both real handy working at the quarry pulling uh, drive shafts on cat equipment because they're all half inch 12 point. Uh, half inch Craftsman backup ratchet. Uh, one long GP 23 millimeter. Um, comes in handy on Toyota forklift lug nuts. A couple of universals, uh, myriad of extensions down here. Uh, some impact, some not. Uh, some standard hex sockets here, 12, 14, 17, and then uh, half 916s, 58s for drain plugs on final drives. Comes in handy. Um, these three right here, so this row, this row, and this row, all these racks, these are all Harbor Freight impacts. And I've beat the ever loving shit out of every one of them. And they've all held up great, except for the 15-16s, and that's because I pushed that one way too hard and uh, blew it all apart. I was uh, rebuilding an apron feeder for a uh, crushing plant, and all of the, instead of a conventional rubber track uh, belt system, they used track pads from a 215 cat excavator, and uh, so we had to remove all those track pads that were all shot. And this track feeder was like 80 feet long, so there were several hundred of the track pads, and I just plumb wore the socket out. So that one's been replaced, but I've been beating on this one now for seven years, and it's been awesome. I wouldn't say no to anybody if they uh, asked, should I buy Harbor Freight impact sockets? They've all been real good to me. Uh, down here, <clears throat> got a little bit of everything. This is more uh, sacrificial metric wrenches over here. So if you get into a tight spot and you gotta, you know, cut a wrench or bend it or something, that's the ones to do it with. Most of them just cheapy offshore stuff, nothing special. Over here, I've got those as well in standard, except for a couple of them in there are protos, so I wouldn't chop them up. I like this guy right here. I was uh, doing a rebuild on a Cummins K19 in the shop and uh, pulling the injection pump off of the front cover and there just wasn't really any way to get in there and take the, uh, the nuts off of the studs. So I got creative with the uh, torch and uh, kicked the head over a little bit and then gave it a half moon and Bob's your uncle, the injection pump come off. So that worked out pretty good. Uh, over here we got Mac. Um, swivel impacts, 3 8 drive from 10 to 19, uh, half inch drive standard from 3 8 up to, I think, 7 8 no, 15 16 Picked all of those up at a pawn shop for only 150 bucks. I beat the crap out of them too, and they've all been real good. Um, down here we got some quarter inch drive stuff. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I leave a 10 millimeter socket on the quarter inch ratchet pretty much all the damn time. Um, this guy here is kind of cute. And it's, 
I don't know if Snap-on makes anything even remotely reminiscent to this anymore, but it's about the smallest quarter-inch ratchet that I've ever used. Comes in handy every once in a while. Um, wish that it had more teeth so that you could get a shorter swing on it. You can see it's uh, it's kind of coarse. But it's there for when you get into a real tight spot. Uh, this here's another gear wrench thing. I don't have no brand loyalties, but when you're out on the road, you don't want to have stuff that uh, if it gets lost, um, you know, it, it hurts the pocketbook real bad. So I go for good quality uh, for decent pricing. It's kind of how I buy all my equipment and tools. Um, quarter inch drive, full set. So if I got to go into a customer's location inside of a building and I can't have the service truck anywhere close to where I'm working, then it makes it real easy for me to just grab a kit and, you know, hop up into the building and go do what I got to do. At least for diagnostic purposes, just so you can get in there and remove some solar panels and such. Uh, this here is GP impact socket sets, metric, um, standard and deep from 7 up to 19 mil. Uh, I run these on my Milwaukee 3 8 impact all the time. All the time. Uh, they've been really good to me. This here is basically the same kit, uh, but in standard from uh, 5 16 to 1 inch. These ones have all been real good. I haven't beat on them quite as long as I've been on the metrics because, face it, we live in a metric world. Almost everything's a metric system nowadays when it comes to fasteners. Um, but when I'm working on the old heisters and the old Clarks, things like that, these are uh, super handy. Like I said, they, they, they take a whooping pretty good. I've been beating on them. Well, everything in the truck here. There ain't much that's new, but everything gets used. Uh, so for a long time, my 3.8 stuff was uh, a little bit of everything, offshore stuff, domestic stuff, um, cobbled together items, stuff that wasn't awesome quality, stuff that was great quality, and I beat them up real good. But I decided that I'm going to throw all that stuff in a garage, and we'll work with it, uh, doing stuff in the house and on the pickup and all that. So I went ahead and bought um, the 3 8 12 point, 6 point deep metric standard, or sorry, deep and shallow metric and standard, every socket that Tecton makes. And I've been beating on these for a couple of years and they've all been really good. I've only had one incident and, oh, not that one, this one, yeah. So, focus. Little Stephen Cox focus action there. Uh, you can see right there on the inside of the, the square. I ran it on the impact a couple of times, and it's a little bit soft. Been good other than that, and I'm not going to bother teching with a warranty unless the thing actually fails. But that showed me that uh, <clears throat> he's. I should probably just use the impact sockets with the impact gun. So. Uh, a couple of spark plug sockets down in there in 13, 16, 5 eighths. Uh, extensions, uh, wobbly headed extensions come in handy. Uh, real long extension here, uh, 24 incher. Typically goes on to this oil filter wrench for pulling uh, oil filters on Toyota 4Y engines. Uh, Got some Torx Impact guys over here. Um, T40. I know just about everybody's broken a T40 over the years. I did too. Uh, so, got an overseas replacement for it. Um, these are all hex bits here. Um, not any one of them has done me real well. I've broken this 4mm one a hundred times and just keep replacing it. <clears throat> but I'll show you guys here in a little bit. Um, just recently bought the Gear Ranch 84 piece Master Hex kit, and uh, we're going to try those out and see how they last. Uh, 3 8 ratchets here. You guys can see I run inexpensive ratchets, the Pittsburgh stuff, 72 tooth, um, flex head, long handle. Uh, 
got a 3 8 breaker bar down there and then there's my backup 3 8 ratchet for if I you know kill all three of those in a day they've been really good the best thing about them Harbor Freight ratchets is you just throw it on the counter tell them you want a new one they go get it and you're back in business um, you know for 15 or 20 dollars I don't think you can go wrong they've been real awesome uh, down here in the bottom drawer we got the heavy stuff um, you can see we got combination ratchets in here and they go from inch and a half up to two inch um, don't need them all the time but every once in a while you do um, got the 24 inch pipe wrench here uh, believe it or not I use that more than I'd like to admit when you get into a pinch sometimes you've got to pull a, you know a big cap or a gland nut off of a hydraulic cylinder or something along those lines uh, got a chain wrench in here uh, this guy that, teeth are starting to get round on it. Uh, another chain wrench down in here, the 24 inch OTC one. This 18 inch handled one right here with the bigger chain works a lot better than the OTC one, but uh, I kind of like redundancy. So I've usually got two of a lot of my tools. Um, these two guys here are Toyota hub nut sockets for when you got to uh, get in and do brakes, pull off drums and such. <clears throat> Got some uh, clamping pliers down in here. Those guys. Um, every once in a while when you're doing a little bit of welding, you gotta hold some shit together, you know? Inch and 7 16 angle wrench. Uh, that comes in handy for um, primary pressure hoses from your hydraulic pump to control valves for Toyotas and Heisters. Uh, a lot of those uh, dash 16 one inch hoses are uh, the inch and 16 inch and 7 16 on the end uh, down in here we got the little cheater pipe the, uh, you can see recently had to get a modification uh, got into a tight spot underneath of a hoist built and designed lift truck for Toyota and it was almost absolutely inaccessible to replace an o-ring face fitting that was uh, leaking uh, this guy here strap wrench um, pulling filters uh, especially fuel filters and oil filters on the big diesels um, got a couple of well there's another sharpie I was looking for not supposed to be here with the other marking tools. Um, got a 18 inch crescent down here. Got a couple of 8 inch C clamps down there. Uh, more stuff for when I got to weld up LBRs and such. A um, couple of other welding clamps down here. Uh, these guys for doing sheet metal, stitching it back together. These guys, I don't know what anybody ever designed those for. Um, rarely comes in outside of being able to make a tack inside of jaws there where you're putting a couple pieces together um, right here we got a five foot umbrella and then here on the air compressor we've got this socket that I built I live here in western Washington where it rains all the damn time so trying to keep the water out of the drawers keep the rust off the tools you set that five foot umbrella in there and it covers up the drawers save myself any little bit that I can uh, down in there, you can see we got the uh, Harbor Freight Pittsburgh 12 inch file set. Um, I got Nicholson's and all kinds of other different files. These guys come in handy because they're super, super coarse, so you can move material real fast if you don't feel like firing up a welder and uh, getting the grinder out and making a mess and making a bunch of noise. Uh, I guess we got a couple of micro USB chargers in there. Um, Oh, and then there's a, this here's a little service tool, plug it into the pallet jacks with this little four pin plug and you can uh, use the controls on the pallet jack to manipulate some of the settings and the controllers. And then this here, just some reference materials for some Nissan and Komatsus with the uh, K21 Nissan motors. Move over here to the second cabinet, another set of drawers. Um, so inside here, this is 
uh, Lang tools. Um, yeah, you see the Lang there. Um, combination internal, external, snap ring plier sets. Um, the Lang stuff, you can buy it with Lang on it or Craftsman or Cornwell, Mac, uh, a whole bunch of different names. And I bought the Lang ones because it saved me about five bucks on the whole damn kit. Uh, over here, we've got the Milwaukee M18 half inch drill. Come back out to compartment.